What a great call you made joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics today. We're coming from our outstanding studios as always, and uh, we're glad you're there to listen and watch. We have a guest extraordinaire, Bengals quarterback coach Dan Pitcher, bright young football mind, there's no question. And he talks about, you know, some of the challenges that they've had and working a game plan around the physical limitations that Joe had the first month of the season and now he's ramping up and and um, they're going to be able to incorporate so much more after the bye week and they're doing the self-scouting thing during the bye and examining that run game examining what's going on in the passing attack uh, maybe they'll get under center a little bit more i mean they lead the national football league in percentage of shotgun snaps i think there's they're still probably in single digits <laughs> after six games in terms of snaps under center i'm sure that'll change i'm sure they're, as a staff, they'll examine their run game and maybe make some tweaks, some changes there. They've done that in the past. Very excited to see what's going to take place after the bye week down the stretch of this NFL season. Three and three still have come nowhere near playing their best football. Maybe they'll go on another run. We appreciate you taking time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapp and brought to you by First Star Logistics because we got a very special guest. He is the quarterback coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, one of the young, bright minds in the National Football League. We're talking about Dan Pitcher. Appreciate you. Thanks for carving time for us today, sir. You got it, Lapp. Good morning. So, offensively, first two drives right down the football field. Boy, boom, boom, two touchdowns. Two red zone executed touchdowns. That ended up being huge in this football game, the way the defense played in the red zone, allowing only one touchdown and five red zone uh, opportunities for the opponent, the Seattle Seahawks. Getting those two touchdowns right away was big and, and playing with a lead. You know, you score uh, to, to tie the football game up, then take a lead and playing with a lead during the course of the football game. It, it, you get off to a good start. What was working so well in the early stages of the football game for you? Yeah, it was. It was a really good start. Um, you know, I just thought we were really efficient. Uh, we were the ball was getting out of our hand quickly and, and accurately, and, and guys were, uh, you know, maximizing their opportunities with it once they had it. And um, you know, we had a nice rhythm established early in that game, and it's a shame that we weren't able to maintain it. Uh, but I, you know, like you mentioned, scoring twice early, I think kind of uh, you know dictated a little bit how how the the bulk of that game went and uh like i said just unfortunate that we we couldn't carry that momentum uh through the entirety of the game what do you i guess the age-old question um off to a start like that and then you know it just it just goes the other way is it adjustments that they made is it lack of execution on your end is it a combination of both what what do you think took place there um, you know, I, I think we we just left a lot of opportunity out there. I think that's across the board. I think that's players, coaches, and 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 we all own that. And um, you know, there was there was definitely a chance to to continue to make plays in that game, and and we just weren't able to do it. So, uh, you know, we we look hard at ourselves. Where there's there's uh, no harsher critic than the the people in this building. Um, and and so you know, we'll we'll get that right and be able to maintain that positive start and carry it through games moving forward. It's the National Football League. Everybody's good. There's no doubt about it. The Seahawks, I mean, this is a division, a, a uh, playoff worthy football team. You know, they're going to be battling the 49ers in that in that division. I mean, it, there, there's no question they have a, a good defensive football team. You've played Baltimore. You've played Cleveland. Look what Cleveland did to San Francisco. I mean, you've played a lot of good uh, defensive football teams, that's that's always a factor. But like you say, there's there's meat on the bone that has been left on the bone, I guess, that you need to take better advantage of. Yeah, there is. And, and they are. They, they're a very good team. Um, they're, they, they've got some talented pieces in that secondary. They're big, they're physical, they're fast. Um, you know, they're really kind of starting to be built back in the image that allowed them to have all that great success you know, 10, 15 years ago, Legion of Boom type deal. Um, and and they do it great. They know how to coach defense and and they play super hard. So a lot of credit, a lot of the credit does go to them. Uh, it's our job to to counter what the, the challenges they pose. And 
uh, we started the game doing that, and, and we weren't able to, to finish the game doing that. But thankfully, our uh, defense played amazing, uh, made critical stops at critical times, and was able to pick us up. Noticed uh, in the running game, they are um, maybe amongst the, a league leader in terms of movement and stunts and uh, twists and everything. As having played the offensive line, that, that's not easy when you have a, a, a lot of moving targets going on, trying to anchor that running game a little bit. That's a challenge, isn't it? Sure. It's, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for our guys up front is, is being able, one, to anticipate those things and then – you know, from our standpoint, as we build a plan is if we can anticipate them, well, how do we avoid them altogether if that's possible? Uh, and, and it's never going to be a 100 percent deal. They're always you know, they can call whatever they want at any, any given time. Uh, but certainly the the movement on the D line poses a challenge uh, in the run game schematically and uh, and just being able to physically execute uh, the combinations up front that we need. So they, they pose all sorts of challenges. Uh, it's our job to meet them. And, um, you know, we'll just keep getting better at that. The first four games of the season, uh, Joe was very stationary, you know, and, and understandably so. The last couple of games, he's looks like he's feeling more and more comfortable testing, uh, you know, the calf with with movement. And I mean, the tight pirouette move he had one, I was like, oh, baby. And then, you know, hurdling people, I'm like, oh, man, here we go. But it looks like that calf is getting, getting better and better. But how big a challenge uh, was it to like, okay, well, this is probably not as good to include in the game plan, although I'd, we'd like to because of the medical situation of our quarterback. And, um, you know, we, we're a shotgun team, but we'd like to get under center a little bit more in some instances. But, you know, we don't really want to do that and have him have to reverse pivot and do all this movement and that sort of thing. How tough was it to, to game plan around the medical issues that Joe was dealing with? Um, you know, I think every week when you show up on Monday, there's going to be issues and every team has them. Right. And so no matter what they are, whether they're health related or just matchup related, it's all about crafting a plan with those in mind. And um, so how hard was it? I mean, sure. At times it's difficult, but it's, it's what we're called to do. You know, it's, it's, it's what we have to do. Uh, and we have, thankfully we have a roster full of, uh, you know, talented players, playmakers uh, that have shown to be that over the last two and a half, three seasons. Um, and so we just got to figure out a way to get it done. You know, it's really, it's, it sounds like a hard headed coach speak, but it's true. You know, it's, that's, that's, you know, where we've found ourselves and we've figured it out three times and we didn't figure it out three times. And we know in the grand scheme of things, that's not good enough. Um, but we've, we put ourselves in a position these last couple of weeks to be able to play ourselves to where we want to go. Um, and so that's, you know, as we sit here on the bye week we figure out what's the best way to do that. And um, we're going to do that. Like you said, um, this offense, it's, it's not a bottom of the league offense, like in some categories that it is right now. It's that's not this Cincinnati Bengal offense. And yet you're still three and three and here's the bye week and your quarterback is ramping up in terms of uh, feeling good, you can maybe start to incorporate some of the things you spent the whole off season uh, saying, man, can't wait to try this, can't wait to try that. Well, haven't been able to do those things necessarily. So this bye week, I think it comes at a very opportune time with the timing of Joe feeling better. And now he has another you know, two weeks before he has to go out there and test it again against the San Francisco 49ers in terms of day-to-day you know, getting better every day. Um, I, I, I just think that, man, this football team has has not played a complete game yet. All three phases, offense, defense, special teams playing at their at a really, really good level. And when it happens, whew, watch out, could be another run. I, I just think that it's kind of setting up for here's another explosive situation for this uh, football team. Wouldn't be surprised they go on a few in a row here. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 very clear to us that we are better, uh, you know, offensively than what we've shown to this point in the season. And we've had sure. moments where we've played well, and and uh, but they have they've they haven't they haven't been enough of them. Um, and so we know that, and and that's why we're working, uh, you know, really hard to to get to the to the explosive 
productive unit that we know we are, that the guys in this building have been in the past. Um, but the past doesn't guarantee you anything in the future. You know, that's we've talked about that before. So it's not it's not just going to happen. Uh, we have to make it happen. And right. I think the buy comes at a good time for us to be able to take a step back and um, chart that path forward, knowing that we have all the people we need to get it done. You know, that's that's the fun part is that this is not a situation where we sit here and we wonder how how can we make it happen? Uh, do we have enough? Well, we know we have enough. Uh, and and that's that's what makes this exciting is that everything is still in front of us, but we got to go do it. Uh, it's not it's not going to just fall in our laps. Um, so that's that's what we're working on doing. You know, your, your quarterback showing the mental and physical toughness to continue to play through the calf, the calf problem. And, and that's no joke. I mean, calf injuries are, those are tricky to say the least. Then T Higgins has a rib issue. Trent Irwin steps up their career best eight catches. Um, Yossi Vosh has his first touchdown reception in the last football game. It, it's like, you know, injuries happen in the national football league. And then, the next man up, that old, which is true, though. I mean, you have to have roster depth. You have pieces. You have components. It is. It's just a just a matter of uh, – that's why I think the bye week, not only what you might be able to reinstall as such in terms of advancing uh, how you're going to attack people, but, man, getting all, all those bodies right, um, people say, ah, it's kind of early, isn't it? Nah, not necessarily, man. Bye week, uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a welcome sight right now, isn't it? Sure. No matter when it comes, I mean, it's, right. it's this is a this is a very taxing game physically for the players and mentally for the players, mentally for the coaches. Um, you know, so you you you're never gonna you're never gonna apologize for a little little respite from that. Uh, it's gonna make you better moving forward. And so you know, we just got to maximize the value of it. Um, get get some rest, clear our heads. Uh, and and know that it's all in front of us. Um, so yeah, we, we got guys that you mentioned that have stepped up that we're going to need to continue to have those guys. Um, and nobody really knows who it is going to be on a week to week basis. So that's a beautiful thing. You you got to walk in the building for as your as a player on Wednesday morning and sit down in that install meeting and and believe that you're the guy that's going to have to make the play to win the game, uh, no matter what role you are, where you're on the depth chart and. Uh, if, if you have that mentality, you'll be ready when the time does come. No doubt. No doubt. It, I, I remember, was it two years ago or last year? I'm getting my years confused, but I do remember that Frank Pollock during the bye week one year, I mean, changed the running game. It, it was inside, outside zone, and then boom, come back, and it's like gap scheme, you know, pin and pull, counters, all that sort of thing. Is that uh, part of the process? Do you, do you like, as a, as a staff, say, all right, what do we need to do? What can we change? If and if we do change it, should it be a drastic change? Should it be a tweak? Should it be subtle? Is that part of the process? The self scouting that goes on now? Yeah, it is. It, it is, and 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 um, you know whether they're major changes or minor tweaks um, or no changes. You know, like that that may be the that may be the conclusion too. Is okay. We we really are headed in the right direction here. We just got to continue investing the reps in these schemes, and uh, yeah. this is who we're going to be moving forward or or. You know, it, it it does give you that opportunity, though, because in a game week, you are you get the self scout reports from, you know, from our people, and and so you see like how the other team sees you, but but to really actually dive back in and rewatch what you've put on tape and and find, and just see the little things of okay, this these worked, you know, maybe it was five weeks ago, um, you know, this maybe this needs to come back up again this week, or you know, but you have the time to do that, where in a normal week. Uh, maybe you could do a, that it, it, quickly, uh, but you also very quickly have to turn your attention to the, your opponent. Um, and so when there's no opponent, that that urgency this week, uh, we don't have that from that standpoint. So you can invest more time in yourself. And um, I think that is important. And, and everybody's kind of doing that in their individual area that they're responsible for. And we'll see what conclusions we draw. But um, that'll be a, a big part of this week. It's, it's interesting, you know, a big thing you don't want to do is establish tendencies, you know, that uh, in the National Football League coaches will um, game plan against those very, very quickly. And I'm sure you on a weekly basis, you to try to determine if there are any tendencies that are that are established. But this bye week is a that's is that part of the process to make sure that 
if any tendencies have been established, they, they get broken. Sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. You know, and really a, a tendency in and of itself. Sure. Big picture. It's, it's not great to have them. But as long as you know them, if you know your own tendencies, th then you can counteract it moving forward. The issue is if they exist and you don't know them. Um, so that's part of what we're doing right now is, is, and again, we do that on a week to week basis. This is, this isn't a thing where like, you know, we're not aware of that stuff every week, but sure. you just have more time this week to really dive in. <clears throat> and sometimes it's just like, you know, I don't give a damn if I've established a tendency, my guy's better than yours. I remember the Raiders when they had the great offensive line shoot, when they were Gene Upshaw, when they were running to the right, he'd get his split about six inches from the center so he could double and work with him. When they were running to the left, he'd get over there with Art Shell about six inches so he could work with him. Everybody knew it, but they still couldn't stop it. You know, I mean, it's like they're, they're just better than you. They're they're just Hall of Fame type guys, you know, and you've got you've got some players uh, from a weapon standpoint that no matter what you do, you're going to have a favorable matchup, right? Sure. There's a balance there. I mean, there's yeah. there, if you, you can get lost in the weeds on – you know, well, 84% of the time when we line up in this formation with this guy and this split, it's, and you know, and then you got to ask yourself, well, what does that really, how is that information that helps the defense? Maybe it is. And if it is, we got to do something about it. But a lot of times there's a lot of information. You see a lot of colorful graphs and a lot of talking heads on TV and, and sure, that's, that's good. It fills its content. Um, yep. Does it, does it inform the defense and how they can attack you? Uh, and, and, what if the answer to that question is no, then don't worry about it. If the answer to that question is yes, then you do have to worry about it. Um, and so that's that's what we do. So, coach, what about during the bye week? Uh, I know the players are off already, but the coaches are grinding, doing everything you're talking about. You're down there at Paycor right now as we uh, do this uh, visit, um, doing the things that you're talking about, self scouting and getting a jump on the 49ers and everything that goes along with it. When toward the end of the week, when you get a little bit more time with family, I know you have a young family. Anything cooking, Coach? We'll just be uh, chasing my little guy around. He's got <laughs> endless, endless energy. I wish I had ten percent of his energy. Um, so <laughs> it'll be uh, that's always fun. And and um, you know Zach, Zach does such an amazing job here of of um, making sure that guys with families prioritize that even in the season as much as you can we all understand the sacrifice that um that this profession requires of us um our wives understand that uh you know your children when they get to a, an age old enough to understand it understand it they may not like it and the wives may not like it and you may not like it to some extent but everyone understands it so when you do get weeks like this it's important that you're home for dinner and you're uh reading the bedtime story and you're uh, getting them out of the crib in the morning. Um, and so that's what I'll be doing every day this week. And I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's very interesting how many, uh, you know, sons of coaches become coaches. And to me, that's an indicator that that particular family handled it right. Because if it was something that caused issues and there were every, daily problems and arguments and I mean, it would probably, the kids would probably say, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do this, you know, and, and cause these kind of things when I'm a, an adult and married or whatever. But if, if it's handled right and, and you have a great wife and coaches wives are unbelievable. Um, there's no question about it and put it, you know, make the environment uh, a pleasant one as pleasant as possible. Man, I can see where, you know, young sons are like, this is cool. And I, I, I want to do this too, you know, and uh, it's, it's interesting how it's passed on like that. Sure. You know, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's the greatest job in the world. I, I can't see myself ever doing anything else. Yeah. Um, and part of that is because of the experience I've had working for really good people who care about the person, understand how important this job is that we do and the expectations that are on us and, um, you know, what the organization, you know, expects of us and, and all those things are important and they, and they matter. Um, but, but being a good husband and a good dad and, um, that that's, that'll always come first. And, um, Hopefully, you know, if if, uh, if Oliver wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, hopefully I set a great example for him. Yeah, that, that, that's a no brainer. You are definitely doing that. Uh, that's that's Dan Pitcher in a nutshell right there, setting a good example for everybody. Talk about the 49ers a little bit. I know you're, you know, in the process of of uh, studying them and I know you're in the early stages of that process. But 
I know they're good. I mean, they were undefeated until Cleveland knocked them off. I kind of wish that, you know, although <laughs> I guess it, it, it's a great win. It's a great win for the division and everything. But I wish they hadn't lost until the next couple of weeks down the road when the Bengals knock them off. But uh, at any rate, what do, you, what, what do you see when you throw on 49er tape defensively? Really good. I mean, just yeah. across the board. Um, yeah. Defensive line's excellent. You know, they – they make life hard on you running the football. They get after the passer. Um, they're sound in the back end. I mean, it's there's a reason why they have the success that they have. I mean, offensively, obviously, they are um, they're present a tremendous challenge. Uh, and then on defense, that that is the same. So, you know, like you said, we're I'm I'm kind of in the uh, I'm a little bit more in the self scout phase right now than I am in the in the San Francisco mode, and so I'll learn more and more about them as the week progresses. Uh, but I know we got our hands full, and uh, I know our guys will come back on Monday and be ready for that challenge, and they will they will have their hands full with us. So it's going to be a good game. And, and the biggest variable, like we've always talked about, is the injury var- uh, variable. Um, Bengals uh, quarterback Joe Burrow dealing with it. And uh, during the course of that football game, McCaffrey, you know, had a problem with a, um, with a muscle in the rib area. Um, Debo Samuel with a shoulder problem. I mean, you start losing components and pieces like that. Uh, you know, roster depth's one thing, but those guys are big time players. And then all of a sudden, it's a lot different dynamic for a young quarterback when those components aren't there. It's like, man, this is a different deal. Sure. That's a great example of uh, problems are universal in this league, right? Yep. Everyone's dealing with something, so um, you can't you can't for a second uh, feel sorry for yourself or or say well, you know why us? It's like well, everybody everyone's got something going on. Um, so I'm sure knowing the the caliber of those two players and how tough they are, uh, if they're able to play, I'm sure they'll be out there and I'm sure they'll present a challenge to our defense that our defense will be ready for. So it's uh, it'll be a fun game. <clears throat> San Francisco plays on Monday night, and then they have a short week, but they're home. You know, they're home on the West Coast, and um, West Coast trips, I remember, you know, people out of the building as such, oh, man, West Coast trips, all those time zones. But players, I mean, when, when you just – when you go, you just go and deal with what you have to deal with. You just go play when you are playing and coaching and all that sort of thing. I mean, it, if, you, if you let it, it can become a right. massive issue. Right. But if you don't, it's no big deal. Right. <laughs> Hundred percent. I mean, that's the mindset, really. When presented with any type of uh, adversity or something out of the ordinary, it's right. Sure, if you spend a whole lot of time thinking about it and and worrying about it, then it's going to be something that is worth worrying about. But if you just look at the okay, here's the itinerary. I got to show up for the bus at this time, and I get on the plane, and the plane lands when it lands, and I get to the hotel when I get to the hotel, and that's the life we live. It's what we do. So, um, you know, we just had one. We just went to Arizona. Uh, yep. and you know, that we did what we needed to do to, to, to win that one. And, um, uh, you know, so we'll approach it with the same mindset heading to San Francisco. Yeah. Um, I, I had friends that, uh, played in Seattle, uh, during the playing career and, and they'd be like, yeah, you guys complain about, you know, an hour, a two hour, uh, plane flight, anything over two hours. We don't have any flights from the up north, way up there in the Northwest, man. Anytime we go on the road, it's yeah. a massive trip. So it's no big deal. I mean, it's just par for the course here in Seattle. And that's true. I mean, it's like you, you, you uh, you play the, the hand you're dealt, man. That's, that's life in the NFL, yeah. right? And we're, and we're actually pretty fortunate being located kind of centrally uh, yep. you know, in terms of the travel time. So, yep. um, you know, we get, we're not complaining. We're, we'll be ready to go. Just tell us where to play and we'll be ready to go. Love it. Appreciate your time, coach. Good stuff as always. Yep. You got it. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, the second, half plus the season after the after the buy and to see uh see all the uh the additional things that you guys are going to come up with but as the old saying goes keep it simple stupid right i mean yeah. hey, <laughs> don't overcomplicate things right no, it's, that's that's the beauty of it it's uh we're excited too and um you know we'll uh we'll come up with a great plan and at the end of the day it's just about you know letting uh letting your great players go do what they're supposed to do um so you look at it that way, it's not that complicated. Yeah. I mean, at every level, high school, college, National Football League, the best coaches that I ever saw and worked with, they put their 
players in positions to let them excel, you know, yeah. show their strengths, show what they're about. And players appreciate the heck out of that, man. I mean, there's nothing nothing better than that. When you guys come up with schematics, it's like I mean, with this this emphasizes your best trait, man. This this go showcase yourself. That's what it's all about. It really is. That's all that's all we're trying to do here, man. That's it. Just just let those guys go do what they do. All righty, sir. All right, Lap. Have a great day. You too, man. Take care. Appreciate you. Talk again soon. Yes, sir. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.